What's up guys, welcome back. Uh, today we are doing uh, follower, subscriber questions. Um, earlier today I shouted out on Instagram that I needed video ideas. There's a lot, a lot of really good, um, good questions and video ideas, so I'm gonna do one this week, another one next week, uh, and the one I'm picking today, there was probably at least six or seven people that mentioned it, um, and that is how, how do you find the dynamic spine that's perfect for your arrow? Meaning, how do you find that optimal you know, length and, and point weight that gives you the most forgiving flex or spine in your setup, in your arrow setup? Um, it's kind of a process, but I'm gonna do my best to explain it here. Um, before I do, I do wanna remind you to hop on over to insideoutprecision.com. Uh, we got a bunch of new hats in, uh, obviously hoodies, t-shirts, all sorts of stuff. We really appreciate all the support. Um, so remember, insideoutprecision.com, get yourself some merch. Uh, so, like I said, today we're gonna to be talking about how to find the most forgiving spine for your arrow. Now. Depending on whether it's my like target setup or tack setup, this is actually the arrow I shot for tack last year with my uh, my EVL 34. I have a little bit. The process is the same, but the result I'm looking for is slightly different. So we're going to start with like field point arrows or target arrows. Um, what we're trying to do here is find the optimal or most forgiving spine, and what that means is. On a shot that's not perfect, when I make a little bit of a mistake, my arrow is going to absorb a little bit of that mistake. Now that doesn't mean that it, I'm not, I may not miss what I'm aiming at, but I'm not gonna miss as big. And in target archery, everybody knows that one or two points can make a huge difference in your score. It can be the difference between fifth and second place, or you know, a podium and no podium. Um, and so, you know, for indoor archery, it might mean I might not hit the X, but I'll still catch the 10 instead of the nine. Or in 3D, I might not hit the 12, but I'll catch the 10 instead of the eight. Um, so having an arrow that, that bails you out on, you know, on, uh, and this goes for, I mean, your, you know, your sight and rest and everything, but today we're talking about arrows. Having an arrow that bails you out on, on the shots that you don't make perfectly might scratch you out a couple extra points over the course of a tournament. So. Um, these are the arrows I shot last year. These are the Axis long range, four mils. Uh, this is the 300 spine. So I have a 30 inch draw length. Um, and I was shooting 70 pounds for tack last year. I chose this arrow because it's fairly light grains per inch. Um, it's micro diameter. So on long windy shots, it's not gonna drift as much. Um, and you know, for tack, there's a lot of long shots I wanted. I wanted an arrow that was fast. Um, the, you know, the less time that arrow's in the air getting blown around, the better. Uh, this has the 55 grain titanium, 100 grain point. Now, just from my experience, I, I had an idea where this was going to end up. Um, but if you're doing this for the first time, you're not sure what arrow to choose, you wanna look at the spine charts for whatever given manufacturer, manufacturer you are looking at, so whether it's Easton or Black Gold. Um, and generally, it, they, it's gonna be a good starting point. If it tells you with your draw length and your draw weight that you need you know, a 300, um, you're probably gonna wanna start with a 300. If it says you need a 250, you're probably gonna wanna start with a 250. Um, and what we're gonna do is, uh, I always pick a length that's about an inch and a half longer than where I think I'm going to end up. Um, so let's say, so again, this arrow ended up being cut at 29 inches, so from carbon to carbon is 29. Um, but I started this process at 30 and a half, and the reason for that is because, as I'm, you know, if it's if my arrow is too weak, I can always cut more off the back of it and make it stiffer. But if I get too stiff, my only option is to add more point weight, and I didn't want to be adding more mass weight and then buying a whole bunch of new points, you know, to and trial and error basically. Like if I bought 125s and I was still too stiff, I'd have to buy 150s and then if, you know. So anyway, I always recommend starting long. You know, you can cut from the back if it's glued in in the front here, which most are. Um, most of the epoxies and glues these days in an all carbon shaft are very, very hard to get out and you can ruin the arrow doing so. Um, so start longer than you think you're going to do, or going to need. And my process is I fletch one arrow, I leave one arrow bare, um, and then I go to the tuning box. And first I get a bullet hole with the flat shaft at like six feet. Then I work my way back to, I don't know, 20, 25 feet. Um, 
and you know, shoot, make sure it's still a bolt hole, make any adjustments I need to. Then I'm, and I have the bare shaft cut at that same, same length with my, uh, you know, insert and everything ready to go. Then I'm gonna shoot my bare shaft um, and I will actually rotate the knock. So spine indexing, I have a video on knock tuning and essentially what you're doing when you're knock tuning is finding where that stiff spine is. And on these micro diameter shafts, it's a lot more critical than on the larger diameter shafts. A compound bow puts vertical flex into an arrow coming out of the bow. So you want that stiff spine to be aligned vertically, whether it's on top or the bottom. I like to have mine on top. Um, you want that aligned vertically and you want it the same for all arrows. Because if, if one is vertical and one is off to the side, that arrow is gonna react differently coming off that rest. And a bear shaft will show you that really, really quickly. Um, so I will mark the top of my knock. I'll just like color it with Sharpie. And I, before I move my rest or anything, I'm gonna shoot and I'm gonna rotate that arrow 20 degrees. And then I'm gonna shoot and I rotate that arrow 20 degrees until I get either a bullet hole or the closest to a bullet hole. Um, then if I need to, I will move my rest slightly to get it to come into a bullet hole. And you'll, you'll be shocked at how little movement it takes in your rest. I mean, we're talking, you know, 64th to a, a a 32nd of an inch one way or the other will you know change a, a half inch tear right or left or up or down um, so once i have a bullet hole with my fletch shaft then i'm going to shoot them and this is where this is where i think the mystery kind of lies in a lot of stuff um, so this first portion is going to be i'm, I'm going to be talking from a right-handed shooter's point of view for a left um, where the arrow impacts is going to be just the opposite. So I will go over that, but this is going to be for a right-handed shooter. So in my target here, I'll kind of zoom in so you can see this a little better. Okay, so in my target here, I sight in with my flat shaft and I've got it dead nuts in the middle. Then I'm gonna shoot my bear shaft. This shaft has veins, but just use your imagination. So then I shoot my bear shaft. If I personally, if, if I shoot and this bear shaft impacts within a half inch to an inch of my, my fletch shaft, I, I think that my spine is probably right on. Um, it's gonna take just a teeny tiny movement in my rest to bring that, to bring that in. Now, when you're moving your rest, um, a, so you're always going to move opposite for vertical um, meaning if my bear shaft is like an inch lower, I'm actually gonna raise my rest just ever so slightly. And I mean, it's so little, um, you know, we're talking, like I said, on a micro adjustable rest, maybe like two, three clicks. I mean, you can barely even see the rest move. Um, it will change the point of impact of my, my field point, probably like, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch, but it'll bring my bear shaft up an inch, inch and a half. And the goal is to get them hitting together. I don't really care if they're both right in the middle, but I want them both impacting, like stacked on top of each other. Um, now, the left and right can get a little bit more tricky. So a lot of people ask me, you know, they shoot and they say, oh, well my knock, you know, when it hit, my knock is to the right of, I'm sorry if this is mirrored filming, but um, they say, oh, my knock is to the right, you know, pointing to the right of the, the front of the shaft. Now, if you are shooting like a, a solid foam block target, like a high density foam target, or a target like these spider webs where it's got these two layers of mesh, then I will go by how that knock is kicking. But if you're shooting a bag target, the density of the material inside is so ununiform that you know even with fletch shafts, you'll get bail kick right and left. Um, so let's let's first say that we are shooting into like a you know block target or one of these spider web targets. Now, if I shoot and my arrow is over here to the left, like four or let's say it's you know I don't know inch and a half to the left, but the knock is crossing my flat shaft. If it's crossing to the right of my flat shaft, then what's happening is during flight, the back of that arrow is actually kicking tail right at, during flight. So it's kicking tail right. And it's actually, it's not moving to the right, it's just flying at an angle. It's flying straight, but it's flying at an angle like this. So when it hits, the point is to the left and the knock is to the right. If you were going to correct a tail right tear through paper, you move your rest to the left. 
So in this scenario, I'm actually going to click my rest to the left towards the point of impact of the bear shaft. So opposite the direction that the tail is kicking, but towards the point of impact of the bear shaft. Now when you do this, yes, it is going to change the point of impact of your fletch shaft. So let's say I move it three clicks, and then I come back and I shoot again. So now let's say my, you know, my fletch shaft impacts on like the very left edge of the X-ring. But what's gonna happen is my fletch shaft is gonna move to the left and my bear shaft is gonna move to the right and they're gonna touch. Now, if you make that correction and, it, and the gap gets bigger, then you know it was most likely bail kick and you actually need to move the rest back the other way. Um, if my arrow was to the left but sticking straight, straight in, you know, just an inch, then I would probably move my rest to the right. So while you're doing this, just keep track of how many clicks you're going each way with your rest. Um, and if it gets worse on the next shot, then go back the other way. Um, conversely, you know, if my arrow is, is out here to the right, but the tail of the arrow is to the left, I'm gonna move my rest towards the bear shaft because my arrow is kicking tail left. So I need to correct that by bringing the rest back to the right until they get, until they're touching. Then once they're touching, if they're not in the middle, I will just move my sight till they're both in the middle. Now, generally speaking, once I get them, you know, when they're touching in the middle like that, that's about as good a tune as you're gonna get. Now you can go shoot them at 30, 40 yards, and it it might show you, you know, some, some spine issues if you have them, but generally speaking, that's gonna be a money tune. Now, if I shoot my arrow, so again, I've got one in the center here, my flat shaft is in the center, and I shoot one that is like way up here, like three to five inches left and three or four inches high. And that, that uh, knock is pointing kind of down and to the right. Now we have a spine issue. So on a, on, for a right-handed shooter on a compound bow, generally speaking, a stiff spine is going to kick towards the riser and generally a little bit low during flight. So it would be a tail right tear through paper, like a little bit low right. So what that causes during flight is the back of the arrow drops to the right and, and down, and that arrow hits like this. So if I have a big gap like that, now I need to start manipulating spine. So going back to our example of starting long, let's say you, you, know, you start with a 31 inch shaft with a 300. You're pretty sure it's gonna be too weak. And you shoot, and for again, a right-handed shooter, my arrow impacts low and to the right, but the, the knock is high and left. That means my spine is too weak. So I need to shorten that arrow in order to correct that. And you can just cut from the back, square it back up and try it again. I generally go in half inch increments. You're not gonna notice anything with like a quarter or an eighth of an inch. Um, but again, for a right-handed shooter, a weak spine is going to kick away from the riser and usually a little bit tail high. So weak is away and up, stiff is towards and down. The same goes for a left-handed shooter, but the, the direction of the arrow is different. For a left-handed shooter, a weak spine is gonna be high right, and a stiff spine is gonna be low left. Um, so you gotta think about that when you're, when you're doing this if you're a left-handed shooter. And I, I even confuse myself because I tune so many right-hand people's bows that when I'm tuning my own, I'm like, wait, 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 which way? Okay, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's weak. Um, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna keep cutting that bear shaft down until I get it to impact with my fletch shaft. And if you really wanna be picky, you can cut both of them down and refletch your, your fletch shaft every time. Um, I would actually recommend it. You're gonna burn up some, some veins, um, but we, you want both arrows to be you know, pretty much equal. Uh, so now I've got, you know, I cut it down, cut it down. So let's say I cut it down a half inch and then I go from here to like here. It's like, okay, if I, I halved it with a half inch, I need to go a full inch. So then you cut another half off and boom, now you're right in the middle. Now you've got the correct spine arrow. You can fletch both of them and start shooting. So that is kind of my process for finding that, you know, what I call the, the optimal spine. Um, you know, when you get it good at 20, you can shoot it at 30 and 40. Um, and it'll, it'll magnify any, any variances. Now, Generally speaking, you know, at 40 yards, that's a long way to shoot an arrow with no direction or no steerage. Um, most people are gonna tell you that's it's 
kind of silly, but I know pros that, that do it. Um, I can get, when I had this bow set up, well, I still do have it set up, you know, I could shoot a bear shaft with a fletch shaft at 50 yards, and they weren't like touching at 50, but my, my bear shaft would usually be within two to two and a half inches of my fletch shaft, which to even get an arrow to hit in the same universe as a fletch shaft um, at that distance is incredible in my opinion. So that's an optimal spine. That arrow is, is optimized for your setup. Now don't think that just because you got it set up for, let's say, like I have a Hoyt and a Matthews that I shoot a lot, or sorry, a, a PSE and a Matthews that I shoot a lot. This arrow is set for my PSE. It would probably be very, very close to my Matthews, but not exact. Every cam system is different. Some are more aggressive, some are a little softer. You know, the let off will change all the amount of flex that goes, all that stuff changes the amount of flex that goes into that arrow. So you really gotta pick a set of arrows per bow and roll with it. Now, like I said, this is getting really nitpicky. Um, this is not something I'm gonna recommend for an amateur or a novice shooter. You need to know that you have the ability to shoot a two inch group at 50 yards or even get two arrows to touch at 20 yards. Otherwise you're gonna have no idea if it's, you know, the, the arrow or just you missing three or four inches at 20 yards. So you gotta be pretty confident in your shooting in order to do this, but it is really cool when you find that optimal spine, you get to see just how much more forgiving your setup is. You know, a, a five inch miss or a four inch miss turns into a, a one or a two inch miss. Um, so. Like I said, that's my process with field points. Now with broadheads, the process is the exact same, but I actually want my arrow to show that it's a little bit stiff, specifically for fixed blade broadheads. And the reason for that is that when that arrow comes out of the bow and it's, it's flexing like this, with a fixed blade broadhead, the longer it takes to recover, meaning the longer it takes that point to settle down and just start spinning, the more time those blades have to catch wind and want to plane one way or the other. So I want an arrow that's gonna come out of that bow, have enough flex to get around the rest without kicking, but then three yards off the bow, boom, it's, it's recovered and we're rolling, or two yards off the bow. Um, so for a fixed blade broadhead, I have found that an arrow that's, that's a little bit stiffer than what would be considered perfect, tends to be more forgiving with broadheads. Um, you know, a, an arrow that's weak, like too weak with a fixed blade is a nightmare. You'll never get an arrow to hit the same place twice because that arrow's flexing so much coming out of the bow that that broadhead has all the time in the world to catch wind. And then finally, you know, depending on where that arrow is and its flex, it's like, oh, we're going this way. <laughs> and it goes off into outer space. So for me, being a left-handed shooter, you know, when I'm doing this process for a hunting arrow, which I did this with my 250s, uh, my X impacts, you know, I got it to where um, that arrow was showing, it was hitting about one o'clock on the white dot when maybe just outside the white when my fletch shaft was right in the middle. Because as a left-handed shooter, remember, a, a stiff arrow is gonna flex towards the riser and usually slightly down. It's, you know, in flight, it's gonna kick towards the riser and knock low. So for me, that's what shows stiff, that point of impact was like right here. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, like right here. Um, for a right-handed shooter, it would be at like 10 or 11 o'clock, maybe a quarter inch outside the white at 20 yards. And I can shoot expandables, I can shoot fixed blades, I can shoot anything, and they hit right with my field points. Um, I have often found that if you get a good bear shaft tune on your arrows, your broadheads and your field points are usually money. Um, if I can get a, an arrow with no steering in the back to fly straight enough to hit what I'm aiming at at 20 yards, it's not planing one direction or the other. And that's what causes misses with broadheads is, you know, that broadhead kicks right or left and then phew, planes. So again, you might burn through a couple arrows doing this. It's just the nature of the beast. You know, you're gonna go through some veins, refletching. And like I said, you're always gonna cut from the back. Obviously, you know, once this is inserted, you don't wanna be pulling that in and out a bunch. So if you're start long, it's probably gonna show weak, you should expect that. This takes time, this might take you an hour, hour and a half, two hours, but you will find that sweet spot and it is so worth it when you do. So I know that was kind of long-winded. I hope you're not just totally confused by that. Um, I know there's probably conflicting uh, theories out there on this, um, but in my 22 years experience, this has been pretty fail-safe. Um, and a lot of pros that I know and have shot with say the same thing. So 
Anyway, guys, thank you for watching today. Remember, precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle. I'll see you on the range.